Okay, good morning everybody. Lovely to see you all. So this morning's a little bit different. So we have the APCF as part of our worship this morning. There were small pieces of paper on the table in the foyer for you to write down the question. It's like a, like a visual reminder. If you're anything like me, I hear something and I think, oh, what about? And then by the time I, I'm allowed to ask the question, I've forgotten what I'm going to be asking them. So if you want to write anything down, you can use those bits of paper to write things down. Would anybody like one that hasn't picked one up? And I think that is to come and deliver it. No? Marvellous, okay. Uh, so we just got one notice from Maria, um, and then we'll have some worship. <coughs> yeah, that's fine, do it then. Well, those once again, I come and I say, please, 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 will you volunteer for the Empire Community Days? Don't be shy and don't let time keep. I know it seems like a long way away, but actually we need to know how many people we have so that we can make sure that it is safe to do it and that we can get home with it, really. Um, there are loads of different things that you can do, even if you can't be there on the day, you can do preparation for the crafts or whatever. So if you can in any way be part of it, it would be fantastic to have a great uh, group of people being, you know, helping and that. Um, I'm going to put the list at the end where the coffee is, so when you go through the coffee, I think the coffee makers, whoever they are, could, pre could say to you, have you put your name on there? If not, um, see you next week. <laughs> okay, no, I'm only joking. But please, if you can, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, if you're able, please stand and we'll worship. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we say that you are welcome here. Would you come and, and meet with us, Father? as we bring to you all that this week has been for us. All the people we've met, all the things we've done, all the things we've said, all the things we've perhaps not said, we bring it all to you, Lord. And we come into your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we look back over the last year and think about all the stuff that God's doing, it seems right to start with. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see.
Lord, I, I say thank you for the truth of those words. Thank you that you are our loving Father, whose arms uh, we can we just run into. And there may be some of us this morning who really need to run into the Father's arms. be greeted with his embrace around you. He looks into your eyes and he says, I love you. And we might, we, we might want to say, but, 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 I love you, he says. Spirit, just come and do that deep work with us. Me, but also for your walking alongside me 
over the last two and a half years and I've become a first time in So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm hugely grateful to you. And I think we are as a church. We have a couple of gifts for you, Elizabeth, so if you can come on, you did think you're going to get away now. last year and is thankfully standing again, thankfully, uh, but we, so I have his nomination form, but we have a new nomination uh, from Helen Crackpile. I haven't received any other nominations for church warden and uh, that means that as there are the same number of nominations as there are places for church wardens, they've already on their balls been uh, uh, proposed and seconded. And as I just explained uh, a moment ago, there's actually therefore no need to vote. And this means, very simple, <laughs> this means therefore that both David and Helen are duly elected as church wardens and unopposed. Thank you. Um, Treasurer, does 
don't need to be part of the PCC, they can be, or they can be co-opted. Um, it's, it's a separate role, um, but they do need to prepare reports um, when the PCC meets. So now we sort of technically start the second half of the meeting. Uh, one of the, uh, this is kind of the APCM thing really, on the Dunn Election Treasurers. Uh, one of the confusing things, I think, for APCMs is that uh, the period that you're actually thinking about is the previous year. So it's, it's for us, it's, it's right here and now, it's December 2021 to December 2022. And some of you might not have even been here then, and part of the church. So it is a bit confusing. But we do look back, and then I, I in my sermon will spend quite a lot of time looking forward. We have to formally adopt, uh, by email you should have all got the minutes of last year's meeting. Um, I know not everyone was here, but we have to adopt them as an accurate record. Um, so as far as you can remember, to the best of your memory, uh, I just need a show of hands uh, if you agree that what we have is an accurate record, please. If you weren't here, you can't vote, that's fine. Well, some, some weren't here last year, so couldn't. Um, if you weren't here, you can't say it's happy, right? <laughs> it seems a bit bizarre, doesn't it, when you've got this record of minutes um, from all year ago. So we just have to do the best that we can do. Right, okay, now we come to the election of a new PCC. So we have a, an amazing PCC. I, I, I've been so blessed since I've been here to uh, each year have a PCC that works uh, tremendously hard alongside me. And uh, a number of the PCC have, have kind of been with me since I came. Uh, PCC members are elected for a three year term and um, so it means that some will need to come off next year as uh, so we will need uh, many more. You know, uh, for me, being part of this team, and I hope it's the case for those who are on PCC, they might not think this, but I think being on PCC is really exciting. We've had to make some um, really interesting and uh, big decisions over the last kind of two and a half, three years. So to have a whole team of people and we make decisions together uh, is, is just hugely helpful and uh, it's an important way I think for PCC members uh, to grow and an important way to serve and, and, and what that means is that the fuller a PCC we have, so if we have the full number we're allowed, uh, the more diverse it is with a range of views then of course the richer the ministry is amongst us. So included in the PCC, uh, in, in, in sense of the, the numbers that don't, don't count, <laughs> is myself, the church wardens and the deanery synod reps. Uh, just on the deanery synod representation, there is a, a space for one more person. Um, if you're interested in that, then talk to me afterwards. Outside of that, those numbers, we're allowed a certain number from the rest of the church, from the lay part of the church. Um, according to the number of people we have on the electoral roll. So when Marion was going around in the last few weeks and get your name on the electoral roll, um, that's, that's a part of it. So for us, that means we can elect nine lay members of the church to be on the PCC. So this past year, we have had eight lay people serving on PCC. Uh, Jackie Bello, who has been one of those, uh, she and her family have now moved out of the area and so they're worshipping where they are living. Which means that Jack, sadly Jackie's had to step down. Uh, Helen is now church warden, so that frees up a space. All of this means that we have three spaces available to serve on PCC. Um, and I'm very happy to say that we have exactly three nominations. <laughs> So we have Elizabeth, who not only is going to be assistant church warden, but she is happy to come back as a lay elected member of the PCC. Uh, I've also received nominations that have been uh, proposed and seconded from Anna Palmer and Mel Harter. So that makes three uh, new uh, nominations. I'm really 
really delighted that all three of those women put themselves forward. They were really strong members of the church who I think will have uh, differing and um, uh, helpful views that I think will just make the PCC that bit more diverse. So as I said, they've already been, all three of them have already been proposed and seconded. And as I said at the beginning, because there are the same number of nominations as there are spaces available, thankfully it means we don't need to vote. In some churches you have many more uh, wanting to be on PCC and get into this horrible voting system. Um, yeah, you don't, don't even get to see it before. It's a strange system, but it is what it is. So what that means is Elizabeth, Alan and Mel are duly elected to the PCC unopposed. Okay, so all those who are here, and I know not everyone is, but all those who are here who are on the PCC, including the new ones, could you please stand? And if anyone can see who is on the PCC, who is it? Some aren't here. Sorry, Pauline. I can say Pauline don't need to stand, but. Okay, just give them a round of applause because they. Agenda. We don't need to do that. My idea is a uh, uh, dean of the synod rep. Um, there is a space for someone else if someone else would like to. Not right now because you need to have done a nomination form, but we can co opt you. Um, so if somebody is interested in a role uh, on PCC um, doing that particular job, <laughs> then go and talk to Heidi, ask to find out a little bit more about it, and then come and have a chat with me. Uh, the next bit on the agenda is safeguarding. Again, that has to be a standing item at our PCC meetings as well as at NPCM. Uh, John Gilead is unable to be here. Actually, we have him here. Apologies, thinking about him. John Gilead is our safeguarding officer. It's a hugely important role. Uh, but what we've done is split the role into two. So we did that last year. So that John manages some of it, and Amanda Allen, who's our parish administrator, manages other parts of that role because it's it's just sort of expanded. So so John's role is that he uh, completes all our DBSs. So if you've had a DBS done recently, it was probably John who helped you do that, and he tries to ensure that uh, um, all of the uh, all of our safeguarding is up to date. It's a mammoth task. It's a huge task. So if you know you haven't done your safeguarding training and it's due and you've received an email from John about it, please, please, please get it done. Uh, we really want to be a church that takes safeguarding seriously. And we want to be a church that is a safe place for people to be. Uh, Amanda, Amanda's part of that role is safe for recruiting. So that means when somebody moves into a role, uh, largely voluntary roles, I don't like that word as you as you know, uh, with the body of Christ. But but Amanda's role in that is um, to collate the sort of mini interview that we do, to give you um, an application form, to collate the references, and then to give you um, a job description. I mean, all of these things are, are very brief, um, but we do need to do them. And I know that that's difficult for voluntary roles, but if you go anywhere uh, in the voluntary sector now, um, and, uh, and you're going to work with children, young people, or vulnerable adults, you'll be required to, to do these things. And I think it's, uh, it's an attempt to try and be safe, and to keep one another safe. And I know it can go over us, where maybe we're just doing something one hour a week, or even one hour a month. But uh, we, we don't just want to pay lip service to this, we actually want to keep people safe. You, you, know, you will know, uh, you would have seen the news stories of what happens and when things uh, go wrong. And all we can do is do all we can do. <laughs> and I guess that's, that's the point, really. Um, 
Okay, so that's said, God, that, uh, John didn't give me anything else that he wanted to uh, say. So finance, uh, again in the report, you would have seen uh, what Helen wrote <laughs> about our finances. Are there any questions? I want you to stop and ask about questions at this point in time. So the financial situation of our church is significant. Um, and having can't answer any questions about the finances um, right now, if you have them as you were reading the report. Are there any questions? Did you come with any questions about finances? Helen, um, did you you have that nothing to say? Okay, great. <coughs> If you are not giving to the work of the church, but you would like to give to the work of the church, I would encourage you to do that. It's part of uh, our discipleship. It's as important as praying or reading scripture or coming to services or serving in our groups or whatever it might be. Uh, There's information all over the place. In their weekly newsletter, there's information. On the table, there's information. On our website, there's information. So if you would like to give regularly, then just look at any of those points and if all else fails, <laughs> talk to Helen slash now Liz. <laughs> Give Liz a few weeks. <laughs> talk to Helen um, and Helen about how you can guide you. I'm moving through the episode swiftly. Now we're just going to take a pause and we're going to have some readings and then I'm going I'm to speak for those readings. Looking at back a little bit to last year, saying something about that, and then looking ahead. So, if we can have our, our reading, so that's Elizabeth and Colin. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 37, starting at verse 30. This will be the sign for you, O Hezekiah. This year you will eat what grows by itself, and the second year what springs from that. But in the third year sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more a remnant of the house of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love 
one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. These are the words of the Would you like to take a moment just to stretch 10 seconds to get some air into your lungs before you have to listen to me again? <laughs> stand up. When I'm doing, when I'm in seminars, every 20 minutes they have to stand up. <laughs> People were coming and going, and there was a sense of oh, just waiting and seeing, not really sure about the this. But the second half of 2022, I think, felt that was a, we were all in a much more settled place. It was much more hopeful and a sense of, okay, now we're living with a new normal. There was an increasing sense that as God's people, we were taking hold of the call to rebuild as a church community. It's embodied in our vision booklet. So anyone who's new now um, in that welcome can actually get a vision booklet, which tells you really what, what we're about, what our priorities are, what our values and principles are, what our, our way of being church is. You know, when I look back to last year, it was a complete delight, for example, to have a normal Easter and Christmas. Do you remember? We've probably forgotten already. But we had a completely normal Easter and Christmas with our families and as a church community. As a 
church community, we saw lots of people. We ran the Glengar Park Community Days for the first time in the summer, which Maria's talked about this morning, we're going to do again this summer. We started weekly services at the new care home. We had to, we started to run coffee, cake and chat, which we've subsequently stopped. That's a good thing, because we're not afraid to start something and evaluate, is it doing what we wanted to do? No, it isn't. Let's stop it. We're not afraid to try it. We started our monthly cafe, monthly cafe style Sunday services. Some really great things last year. Our engagement with the community has grown. And as this parish's glimpse of heaven, I say that a lot. <laughs> But as this parish's glimpse of heaven, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. And of course, we kept plodding on with the plans for uh, our, our plan to reorder All Saints at Great Harrodham. I hope to have more to say about that at the end of the summer. We'll see. Do you know, next month is two years, two years since we uh, agreed to take on that project. Uh, last year, we also welcomed Rob as our ordinand and Alice as our intern, both who started last September. I have to tell you, they make such a difference to me. It's, it's wonderful having work colleagues, but it has grown ministry among us too. Last year for me was characterised by the need to have courage to let go of what we were leaving behind and cling to the core of what will be. And there was so much to celebrate. For me, that's how I ended the year. There was so much to celebrate. Now, as we now look forward, what I'm talking about now, really, I, I want to encourage us with two things. The first is more of a prophetic sense, which I I'll just talk briefly about. just want to put that out there for now. Um, but I'll be concentrating on the second thing. So uh, the sort of prophetic sense that I, I have is that I, I think something interesting is happening in the church in this nation, across the nation. I think the Lord appears to be preparing and equipping his church to be more spirit-filled, to be more equipped and confident in bringing the gospel to people, and with a greater sense of being a sent people to make new disciples. The Church of England, I don't know if you realise this, the Church of England has been in decline consistently for 70 years. That's quite shocking, isn't it? 70 years. And in so many ways, it can feel as though the church is being dismantled. You know, this sense of, it's just not what it was, or what I thought it was, or what I think it should be. Sense of just being dismantled. But I want to suggest, rather than it being the death knell, that actually what we're experiencing instead are the birth pains as God reshapes and recalls his church. It's a sort of dismantling in order to reshape us. A quick, for those who know any church history, a quick look through church history. And we see that around every 500 years or so, there is significant reformation in the church. A quick look through church history, you'll see a roughly around every 500 years or so. And those uh, who are far more prophetic than many suggest that that is the phase that we are now in. Uh, and Reformation can take a number of years, it's not a month, it's a number of years. But those who are more prophetic than me suggest that's the phase that the church nationally is in. So what does that mean for us? I suspect this year is a growing year. Growing in spiritual depth, in numbers, but not in the way we've experienced before. I think it's going to look different. And growing in confidence in sharing our faith once again, wherever we are, whoever we're with. I mentioned in my written report the scripture that uh, Elizabeth read for us this morning, Isaiah 37. Because uh, when I was preparing to come here some two and a half years ago now, the Lord gave this scripture to me. As we emerge uh, from the pandemic, I don't know if you can kind of hold what Elizabeth said to you, but as we emerge from the pandemic, we are the remnant 
We here, and I know there are some who would normally be here but can't be here, we are the remnant. That's what that passage talks about. There will be a remnant, God always retains a remnant, always. It's the nature of God's church, the nature of his character. We are the remnant that it talks about. And I think it's taken time for us as a church to adjust to that. And in terms of, uh, it, that Isaiah passage kind of talks about essentially three years. And in terms of my time here, years one and two, were about reorienting ourselves and starting to respond to what the Lord was putting in front of us as the remnant. But it's in year three, that passage, in year three, for us that's this year, where we sow and reap. Where we, where we see the At the beginning of 2023, we received a confirmation prophetic word from Song of Songs 2. Do you remember we studied Song of Songs uh, in detail? Uh, and the prophetic word was this the winter is past and spring is on its way. Remember that word, beginning of the year? So I think this year, this is the year that we'll start to grapple with the question around what does the church of tomorrow look like? And therefore, what do each one of us need to do to join in with that? I don't know all that this means, <laughs> but I think it's good. And that's, that, that's my prophetic sense. We'll see in a year from now um, what the Lord has come to me to say about that. Okay, the thing I want to spend most time on is the second thing. As God's distinctive community, a particular area of church life that I, I think we need to focus on is the shaping of our connect groups. We some midweek groups, some meet during the day, some meet in the evenings. Our vision, for those who can, let me see, who can tell me what our vision is? Now, Alice, you've got it in front of you. <laughs> Who can tell me what our vision is? What's the single word? Connect. Good, show sake, you should be able to shout it by there. Okay, connecting with? Jesus. Jesus. Community. Community's the last one. Each other and the community. Marvellous. Okay. <coughs> Connect groups help us fulfil each area, each one of those in the following way. So, connecting with Jesus. So, Time to study, time to apply that scripture to our daily lives. Perhaps naming, what difference is this study of this scripture going to make to my everyday life? Then we can ask one another about that the next time we're together. Time to pray for one another about <coughs> our daily lives, which of course might include um, ministering to one another. It might include hearing from God for one another. It might include gifts, using the gifts of the Spirit as we're praying for one another, praying for one another. Connecting with each other. Time uh, to build friendships with each other. It's a time and a place to be honest about our daily lives. Really honest. To care and support one another. Time for mutual discipling between meetings. It's not all about when we're just in a meeting. I think we have a tendency to do that. And then finally connecting with each other. Connect groups. Give us a time to talk, to equip one another, and pray with one another, and for one another, in, in both our daily lives and in our church ministries. It's a whole life thing. Uh, Colin read Acts 2, was the first reading he read to us, and describes the activity of the early church in really practical terms. Now, we live in very different times, and therefore, we're not going to try and replicate what it said in Acts 2, because we, we're not in that time. It's the early biblical community. But the fact that they uh, existed in small groups, largely meeting in homes, meant they were each other's basic Christian community. Caring and loving one another, enabling each other to be faithful to the faith, to grow uh, in their relationship with Jesus. Uh, uh, Sunday mornings are great, uh, and whilst they represent for us our uh, kind of modern, gathered, basic Christian community, the very nature of our own connect groups midweek I mean they might well function in a similar way as Acts 2. So look out, <laughs> everybody. 
Because in the coming months, and that includes those who are listening on the screen later, our Connect Group facilitators, they're no longer going to be called leaders, uh, that's a deliberate change, <laughs> the facilitators uh, will help each of their groups look at how it can further shape itself around those three things. And we'll notice this much more in the autumn. The next scripture that Colin read for us was from John, John 13. A new command I give you, love one another. Love one another. That is how they will know that you belong to me, says Jesus. Because of how you love one another, we need to be different. Sometimes I hear people say that they feel lonely, that they feel uncared for, that they feel unloved, that they don't have friends in the church. Anyone felt like that in this church? Okay, to be honest about that. I, I, know, I know somehow because you told me. This seems to be the very opposite of the picture given in Acts 2 and the command given in John 13. That's less than we might hope for in the church community. Someone said to me recently, we in the church, we're not visitors to one another. The brothers and sisters, we're trying to find ways of connecting with one another, of loving and serving one another. And so that part of being God's distinctive community is what I'd really like us to focus on and be intentional about over these coming weeks, months, and this next year. You know, Jesus and the biblical writers, they seem to understand but that where there are more people, and we're not a huge number of people, but if we were all here, there'd probably be 80 or 90 of us, including children and young people. It's not a huge number of people, but it's too many people to know well. So the, the, where there are more people, the greater need there are for small groups. And if we look at Jesus, Jesus had 12 close friends, just 12 close friends. So it seems to me, therefore, that as the church grows, it becomes harder to really know and feel connected to others, unless we have a small group that we belong to. Uh, when Chris and I, we were at uh, Christ the King in Kettering, uh, before I, I started to ordain uh, ministry, we uh, were part of a small group. Uh, yeah, there we go. Sorry, it's a blurred, it's, a bl it's not a very cute image, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, was, this was our small group. And actually just this week, um, somebody from that group posted it on Facebook, we posted it on Facebook. Oh, I'll use, I'll use that photo. I think Chris and I are very young. It's only eight years. <laughs> Haggard by the stress. Um, uh, our small group, I was so appreciative of their support when we got married. And then when our first child died, we were given meals, shopping was done for us, people just sitting with us as we cried. And then in that same small group, someone else's child died just six months later. And as a group, we rallied again. Hospital visits, more meals, helping them to plan the funeral. And not just about care when someone is in need, but friendships <coughs> develops, cups of coffee, cinema visits, party trips, New Year's Eve celebrations together. Now, of course, you know, we're all different. Some of you might go, oh, that sounds so I'm talking to my wardens. They were like, what? We're introverts. <laughs> of course, we're all different. So we do it in our own way. But we all need friends. <laughs> we all need to be loved. We have a very small uh, care team, which will continue to exist. There's only three people in our care team. So it's very limited in what it can do. And uh, in all reality, it may well cease to exist over time. The increasing emphasis it, for us is going to be everyone caring for everyone, rather than a small group of people, of, or, or a small group of leaders doing it for other people, which is why we've changed the name of Connect Group Leaders to Facilitators. It's not about them doing everything, it's about them facilitating all of us in ministry, all of us looking out and looking after one another. No matter what our situation, 
no matter what our circumstances, and, and I say this as someone who, who, who you know, just talked about going from getting married, the delight of getting married, to the utter devastation of a child dying. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are, we all have things to offer one another. That's the truth. And of course there are times when we might need to receive more, and there are other times where we will be giving more. But we need to guard against an unhealthy culture, which some people always give, and some people always receive. Because it's just not who you really are. So having talked to the PCC, and the staff team, and the ministry leadership team, and connect with facilitators themselves, perhaps one of the best ways to ensure everyone is caring for everyone else, is for everyone to in some way belong to one of the connect groups. This is about belonging to God's family, to one another. Now currently, there are four groups. We know we need to increase that. So we're gonna look at that in the, in the coming months. I keep saying, <laughs> Ben and Livia coming soon, <laughs> who are gonna be our two new curates. They have no idea what's waiting. <laughs> belonging, put that, in italics to one of the groups will look different for different people. What I don't want is anybody start starting now and turning and going, oh no, 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 starting to panic. Belonging will look different for each and every one of us. For some, you will want to be part of the regular meetings that all, all connect groups meet fortnightly. Rob's was weekly and it's, it's about to go to fortnightly. So for you it might be, I hope for many of us, you will try and get to as many of those meetings as possible. For some, it might be just attending the social times of that particular group. For others, it might be being part of the communication tool of that particular group, whatever communication tool that particular group chooses. Now, as I come to a conclusion, and um, I move on to questions, over the coming weeks, the, each group facilitator will invite you, you'll receive an invitation from a particular group uh, connect group facilitator to invite you to be part of that group, possibly at a social time over the summer. It'll be over the summer weeks that you will receive an invitation and everybody will be invited. Nobody will be left out. Please can I, as strongly as I'm able, <laughs> to encourage you to give it a go. Please can you give it a go. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware but it is not always easy to be part of a small group because we're all different characters and we get on each other's nerves, don't we? It's hard. It's hard being in a small group with people. But we have to learn to love one another. Jesus said it's the way people know we are Christians, by the way that we love one another. And if we're not part of a small group, that becomes much harder. And if you find that um, you try a group and you think, let's try a different group, fine. Just come and talk to me. You don't need to give me an explanation. I, I don't want 20 people coming to I want to swap groups and this is why. I need an hour's conversation with you. You, you don't need to explain to me. I don't need to know. It's fine. Just switch groups. It doesn't matter. No one will be offended. Okay. That's what all I wanted to say is we have time for questions. I don't know if any of you have written things down that you wanted to ask. Um, you're welcome to do that now. Or if, as I've been talking, you've got a question. Anyone got any questions? Just stick your hand up. Don't be shy. You all just want your coffee, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Alex, are you able to shout? question for those who couldn't hear is um, it, it was to do with the church office fabric report to do with our reordering um, at all saints and the question was how can we make sure that it's accessible to wheelchair users uh, the, the the access to the church there's two access one is steps one is a uh, slope a ramp 
Um, and then the church itself is, is level, so entrance into the church is completely flat. There is a step up into the bell tower, which will eventually become the toilet. There is going to be a ramp in there, and then in the chancel area, which will eventually become the surgery and the children's area, um, the top end has a few steps, and there is going to be a platform put in there, an automated platform put in there. Okay. Any other questions? You're all happy? Ecstatic? Yes. Yes. Okay. Chris, where's Chris Bessie now? Chris, could you just come and do a prayer for us, please, Chris? So Chris is somehow going to sum all of that in prayer on our behalf. And, um, and then we'll just sing our prayers. I prepared this um, earlier, two scriptures, two verses came to mind. The first was from Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. When you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way walk in it. Let's pray. <laughs> Together, today we go together to hear about the activities of us as a church family, the things we've done in the last year, and we look forward to another year. Father God, thank you for all your blessings and your presence with us. We have journeyed with you through the year gone by. We've risen to some challenges, we've worked through some disappointments, we've seen some really amazing answers to prayer and provision and have heard you speak through your spirit. Grant us, we pray, ears to hear you, and eyes to see you, and to continually sense where you are going, and to follow you in loving obedience. Today in this we give you all the glory, and bless your name. And this from Hebrews chapter 12, the first couple of verses. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked down for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Today, Lord, we give you thanks for those who have served in this church family. <laughs> particularly Dawn as, Vic, as Vicar, Elizabeth and David, as Church Wardens, Rob as Ordinan, and Alice our intern. Grant them wisdom as they put together all of our ministry programs. Particularly honour Elizabeth and give thanks for her term as Warden, and we welcome and pray for Helen as she steps up into this new role. We give thanks also for those who serve in supporting all that we do in worship, serving on roses, children and youth in our connect groups, working amongst seniors and the bereaved, and also all that happens outside the church family in work that supports the homeless and the disadvantaged. Thank you, Lord, for all that has been laid out before us today in the formalities of our annual meeting. Commission, Lord, we bring to you the new PCC, new PCC and wardens into your loving care. May they continually see and sense your presence. Let them see your provision and enable them to act with the wisdom you supply. They shoulder a great responsibility. Bless them mightily. With all these activities, we all act as witnesses to your saving grace mercy and love. May we continually deepen our understanding of how to serve our parish and the emerging community in Glenvale. We're going to close our prayer. The prayer for the Methodist Church, which they pray yearly as they recommit themselves to your service. 
today as we look forward to our coming here, let us commit ourselves individually and as a church family to your service. I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all these things to your pleasure and your disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. The covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven.